Thank you for joining me on Ready, Aim, Stamp. Today I have my buddy Nancy here and she is going to share with us these beautiful cards and how to make them. Hi everybody. I'm happy to be here with Amy today and we're going to do what's called the Book Bind Fun Fold and I am just like into it since I found it. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. So I'll just show you it opens like a book. That's the name, book binder. <laughs> so um, this is just a really simple one using a lot of DSP, um, fa not fabric, cardstock. <laughs> I also quilt. So um, this is, is DSP and I thought that turned out really cute. Oops, sorry. We there we go. All right. Amy's got to keep me in control here. <laughs> and then this one I thought was really fun. I did with the turtle and I used the crystal effects on his shell, which made it really shiny and bumpy. I, I just love it. Texture is so fun. Yes. And then this one I left open, as you can see, and you can put a gift card in here real easily if you just glue it on the edges. And so actually that was the first kind that I made because I was looking for a new way to make a gift card. So that's just another thing that you can do. And I used the pinwheel on that one, which I thought was pretty fun too. So then today we're going to make this one, which is also a pinwheel, but we're going to use our new hedgehog, which is called the Happy Hedgehog. And here is that. I hope you can see it. Yeah. That's the Happy Hedgehog, and it comes with this punch, which makes it a bundle. So that's in the new catalog. Yep, the new mini catalog. The new mini catalog, right. So hopefully you guys have got yours, and you can look in there, and you might want to get this cute little hedgehog. So we'll just sit this up here for right now, and I'll start showing you what we have. So what we have is the card base. The card base is going to be four and a half or four and a quarter. I'm sorry, four and a quarter by 11. So just cut it the length way instead of the horizontal way. And then we're going to score it at the normal five and a half. And then we're also going to score it at the four and a quarter. So that way it goes like this. Okay. So that's the first thing. Then we're going to get the DSP uh, for the front of it. And this little square right here is four by four, and this is one by four. So I usually cut it five by four and then cut the one inch off just because it's easier for me to do that. And then we'll go over the other dimensions as we get to them. Does that sound like a plan, Amy? That sounds great. Okay. So... Um, the first thing we do is we're going to glue it. Well, actually not. The first thing we're going to do is I'm going to put the front on because I like it to get a little bit dry before I work on the pinwheel part. Yeah, all the layers. Yes. So we'll just put a little glue on here. I like liquid glue. It gives me that little bit of slippage, which I usually need. <laughs> So I like to bend that up a little bit so I can see where that score line is. And then I just eyeball that. Looks pretty good. And then we take the one by four skinny strip. This looks like a really fun card for using up some of the designer series paper that we hold on to. And <laughs> yes, very much so. So then when you do this little side strip, try to make sure that you stay as close to the same size or the same place as the other. See why I need that slippage? Okay. <laughs> All right. So there's the front of our card. Then I'm going to go in here and I'm not going to make this a um, gift card holder. But if I were, I would just put glue right up here like this and right down here like that. But I'm not going to do that, so I'm going to glue her down. That puppy's not going to move. No. That's my plan anyways. <laughs> <laughs> my grid sheet might move, but the this isn't going to move. That's right. <laughs> okay. There we go. 
All right, so that's the simple beginning right there. We're going to just put that over there for a minute and let it sit and dry. Okay, so this square right here, let me think this out for a minute because I might, I better just measure. Yeah, okay, this is the three by three. That's what I thought, and that's not what I had written down. So this is a three by three, and it's going to be, I'll bring this down here. It's this base one, all right? Then you need two for the, the actual base of the pinwheel. You need two of these that are five, or two and five eighths by two and five eighths, okay? So that's going to go like that. And then you need these little guys for the actual pinwheel. And you need, oh good, there's another one in there. I thought I lost one for a minute. These are one and a, is that right? Yeah, one and a quarter by one and a quarter. Let's make sure that's right. And I you always... have two different colors with four mm -hmm. of each. <clears throat> yeah, one and a quarter by one and a quarter, two different colors four of each, okay? And you will see, when I'm putting this together, that one of them has a little bite out of the tip because <laughs> I did not accurately punch that out. But you know what? It doesn't matter because it's going to hide. So if you have a little piece of scrap that doesn't quite do it, but almost, you can still use it. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do, besides move these out of the way, is we're going to glue this because this is kind of the base of it. And sometimes I try to like put it in here on my on my grid lines so that I can line this up on my grid lines. Oh, good idea. Sort of. Except this isn't a 3x3, three three, so it doesn't quite fit in the grid. Right. But it's still helpful. So that's what I'm going to try to do right now. So I'm going to line that up. Try to use your crosshairs as mm -hmm. best as you can as best as you can and it's not like the end of the world if it's not perfect okay so that's fairly perfect that's as perfect as nancy gets on anything then you don't want to glue on the tips of this because they're going to be out here so you really are just gluing the center all right so put some good glue on there now actually this might be a case where the the stamp and steel. Yeah. Stamp and seal. <laughs> stamp and seal. Boy, that's, yeah. So it might be a case for where that's good just because once it's down, it would be solid. But, but you again, you don't have the up. slip. Right. right. So I rarely ever use it, to be honest. And you still, okay, see, that doesn't look quite right to me, but it's I giving me a good, yeah, it's giving me a good idea. I can look at my corners and I can look at this, and I'm going to lay it down. And that looks pretty good, don't you think, Amy? Yeah, it looks like you have equal triangles on the bottom left. And that's what, you're, that's what you're wanting. Maybe could go up just a little bit. How's that look? Let's put From that. From my angle, it looks pretty good. Yep. And then, see, so you can put it on your grid paper, and you can see that these points are at least straight, so... I think we got her. Woohoo! All right, so we're going to move that over here for a minute. Um, then we're going to take these, and what you do with these, I always have to think about it, Amy, because you're going to put them on here, but you don't want to glue. You, okay, that's right. You only want to glue the top part. That's what I always have to remember, because you're going to slip them underneath each other. All right. So you can only glue the top. So we'll just start. And you're just going to work your way around. Yeah, so you take one color. And it doesn't matter what color you start with or where you start. It doesn't matter at all because you're going to be turning it around a lot anyways. So you get it on there and you try to make a narrow but a, a consistent. consistent. I use my fingernails a lot. Do you do that, Amy? Yeah, except for after I've cut them and then I... Yeah, and then you don't have one. <laughs> I don't have long ones, but they're there. And then that's when I remember, oh yeah, my stamp and pick, or <laughs> take a pick tool. <laughs> oh, that would work good too, yes. Okay, so then you're going to glue this. See, I'm just gluing. Am, am I... Yep, you're there. in the shot. Okay, just glue the top. And then, okay, this is four and this is four. So you got to remember that the next one is actually this one down there, Okay. 
so again we're gonna did I do that right no you slide under you gotta slide under see you gotta think about this it does take a little bit of thinking and you get that as consistent as you can all right then you get another color this is the trickiest part of this card I think <laughs> All right. Keeping and then, track of what yeah, you're doing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, okay, I'm going to slip under there, and I made a mess, but you know what? That's the other good thing about Tombow glue. It dries clear. Yes. And so it doesn't it's matter. It's very user-friendly and mistake-friendly. Yes, it is. Okay, and as you get going, it gets a little bit tougher. Be sure to press them down good and try to get them to start cooperating with you. I can see that you're starting to get a straight line to follow there. That's kind of a handy it, thing. It helps and, unless it gets off, and then it doesn't <laughs> help at all. But, all right, see, we're, we're pinwheeling there. Did you notice that little twirl? Uh-huh. Yeah. Fun. fun. Okay. So, concentrate, Nancy. You're making me think of other fun ways of using this card. Really? Yeah, like sticking a um, brad in the center and making it so you can actually twirl it. After it's a card. You could do that. <laughs> that would be fun. Okay, I'm going to use my, my little messed up one to stick underneath. So that would be gluing right here. See how easy you can do this? You yes. just stick that under there. Nobody even knows that you had a dog ear on there. Hidden. When we're all done... You'll have to guess which one it is, like the, <laughs> like the peanut in the, in the, yes. And that's the only time you have to think about what corner you're gluing to, because normally it doesn't matter what corner you glue. Right. Okay, and I got that glued down a little far, and you can tell when you've creeped down too far, because it's hard to tuck that in there where you want it. So, caution, caution. <laughs> Just a I'm little, a, not a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I must be getting... It's trying to stick to this. Okay, we're getting close here. Re just almost ready for the drum roll, Amy. Oh, man, I haven't practiced my drum rolls. Well, you better get with it. Should I do the Dora Explorer one? I don't know. <laughs> yes, because I have no you idea. Heard it? Oh, no, Nancy. my grandchildren are way too old for Dora Explorer. Okay. And then the last one. And the last one can be a bit tricky just because you've got this all going down here. A little bit of bulk. Kind of like your seam allowances. Yes. Yes, yes. So da, da, look at da, that. Da, da, da. <laughs> kind of similar not similar exact. okay <laughs> so this is actually a really I did really good on this one because <laughs> it barely has yeah. a crack in there not that it matters for our purposes but if you cared about it really being a pinwheel at the end you right. know you have to be really we're covering that up yes. anyway so it doesn't See, matter of course the one that you're like oh this is very tricky and you exactly make it look so easy so easy <laughs> <laughs> that's what I do <laughs> okay so when you're I could, I actually glued this to this. You could use dimensionals if you wanted to pop up your pinwheel a little bit more, but you can see. It's pretty bulky. Yeah, it is pretty bulky when you get done because we are going to dimensional down here and we're going to dimensional that. So if you're thinking about mailing it, you might. Correct. Kind of not. So the other thing you might want to think about is really these points are higher. So you really only need to glue in here and that will keep that from laying down too much too and have a little dimension to it very little but a little all right so here we go and this of course is going to go and this time oh this time you can because this is a three by three so you can actually put that at three and sometimes, I'll tell you what, ladies, I actually put like some little sticky on the back just to hang it there. Hold yep, it. temporarily hold it. Okay, so then you can easily line up your points. You have to kind of eyeball where your hands are, but you can do it. See? Woohoo! Just like that. 
All right. She Ooh. did it. She and then she it. moved it. But, you know, <laughs> that's okay, too, because it's Tombow. That's right. Have that wiggle room. There we go. All right. So there is that. We are so close to being done with this card. Can you believe how that easy is this is? Quick. Looks very complicated. <laughs> and not. All right. So like I said, I, I used dimensionals on the back of this. And again, you don't really need to put them on those tips because they're not level anywhere they're not flat anyways so level flat who knows what the right <laughs> word is that's why i have amy <laughs> amy is my dictionary actually amy's just my best friend nancy's mine too sometimes these little guys just don't want to come off i'm sorry i'm out of the screen but there we go all right i got them off Okay, so again, here we're just going to try to get this as centered as you can on the first thing, because it's not Tombow. <laughs> All right, now we're going to use our little guy. So we thought we probably should actually show you how this works. So I'm using Early Espresso. And you just, oh, take your mat. It does. Now the reason that we want to use like um, a foam mat or even your catalog if you don't already have a foam mat is because the photopolymer stamps don't have um, any uh, cushion. cushion on them. And so they need that to help you get a nice crisp image. Okay, one thing you want to think about, not real hard about it, but just consider the fact that you are putting this in a punch. So, because you're putting it in a punch, you want it close to the top or whatever so that your punch can reach it. Otherwise, you're going to have to trim it down. Yes, which is not that big of a deal, but... But you might lose your handhold. <laughs> That's true. So, this punch is pretty tricky, and I really should have... Well, I can do it this way. I can be... Am I still in there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Keep an eye on me, Amy. Okay. Okay, so you got to line up his nose and his little bumpies is what I found the easiest. And the legs will kind of fall in place. Now, another thing I do, I kind of like press down on it. So I'm kind of on it right now, but not actually cutting it. And I would like to move it down just a little tiny bit so I can without getting too out of alignment of my punch. Okay, you see that? Super easy. There he is. Just Yay! like that. Pretty fun, huh? So before she goes any further, yes. you can have this landscape view. But I was thinking if you have a sentiment that you want to put here, yep. you could also turn it and have it be like the tent fold. Exactly. Or portrait view very good yeah you sure could now the other thing is I really am NOT a great colorer so I'm not going to color this it has one prepared that's right the magic of video <laughs> thank you video cameras I actually get a little bit tense when I have to color something so we don't want to see that on camera <laughs> all right so all we have to do now is take him and I'm actually going to put two on him, although one would work, if you know, and it would center right in there. But I kind of like him to be secure. And yeah, sometimes, anchor him a little bit more. Yeah, sometimes these, they anchor, but they will move a little bit. Have you mm -hmm. noticed that? Yeah. Yeah, so then, and you could, you know, you could whatever with him. You He doesn't have to be straight. I'm just kind of a symmetrical straight person. <laughs> so... That's why I have Amy for She's my best not friend. I'm the wonky one. <laughs> so there we go. All right. And then just real quick, we'll show you in the inside, and I'll do it. But I just, I didn't want it to be totally plain inside. So I took another four by four. Yep. And I took the little guy and I used the espresso. But this time I actually stamped off. So it wasn't quite so Here bold. This you don't scrap. want to use that? That way you're showing them the same Okay. Off. That's a good idea. Okay. So you just do like this. 
and I'll then have an extra hedgehog in there. yeah that's right <laughs> and there you go beautiful now the hedgehog on the outside has a friend on the inside <laughs> friends are a good thing are they not amy friends are the best <laughs> all right so i never actually used my bone folder on this so i'm going to now for that crease. Nancy had to teach me, talking about me being in the dictionary, she had to teach me that it was called burnishing your folds. <laughs> All right. Oh, what do we get? A little eyeball. That punch comes with, <laughs> with these little eyeballs in it, and you will find that they show up in strange places sometimes. <laughs> almost like glitter. <laughs> yeah, almost. So if I could pick this up, I will glue it in for you. Although I'm sure most of you know how to glue the inside card into your card but hey it's a video that's right so here we go again we're just going to be very careful to get it as centered as possible i want to come down a little bit ta-da beautiful and then i always like to do this just to make sure so there you have it there is one, two hedgehogs out of the camera, all right? <laughs> and then we have our turtle friend, who is just too cute for words, and then just a simple DSP. What do you think, Amy? Very nice. Thank you for showing me that. I've been wanting to do the bookbind fold for a while, <laughs> and I just hadn't. All right. Thanks for watching.